And we're live. Welcome to Your Full of Dirt Lineouts. I'm Aaron Castro, and today I'm joined by Malcolm May, flanker for the NOLA Gold Rugby Football Club. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Uh, you know, uh, can't uh, can't complain these days. Can't complain. Uh, nice. Somehow making money working in rugby. I, I don't it's know. Same. It's the same. It's, it's an amazing feeling. Don't know how that's possible, but uh, but it is. So, Malcolm, let's let's talk about you, man. Um, so so where are you from in Chicago? I know you're from Chicago, but but where at? Uh, I'm from the South Side, about 85th and Kedzie near Evergreen Park. If anyone who's watching knows where that is, but yeah, pretty uh, middle class neighborhood. Um, so what what was your first sport? My first sport, actually, my first sport. My first two sports were actually basketball and baseball. I have a funny story about baseball. So I played, uh, I played t-ball only one year. I actually struck out in t-ball. And I just oh, was, this, huh? is not, this isn't for me. I should probably do some, something else, maybe something more physical. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was bad. My dad, uh, my dad actually came up as a parent from the crowd, my like, third hit, and like, tried to help me line it up, and I just whiffed. <laughs> that's, that's, that's rough. Yeah, yeah. But um, then after that, I got into football and rugby, actually, both freshman year of high school. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's the the story, really, for, for most people when it comes to football. Like, I, I didn't play football until I was a freshman in high school. I definitely uh, didn't play rugby in high school. But, uh, you know. So, you uh, – I guess, so how did – playing rugby in high school come about? Um, so, I mean, I was just a pretty active kid. Like, football season ends in the fall, and I just wanted something to do. So I had a friend who had a bit more of a rugby background, and he was like, hey, come out and try this. And I tried it and just kind of fell in love with it. So, uh, you know, when did you know rugby was your sport? Um... I would say maybe my sophomore year of high school. I think I got – I think I was the last person to be invited to, like, a high school alumni camp. I remember Dave, David Fee, uh, he coached – or he helped coach at Brother Rice High School and also helped out with some USA stuff. He was really pushing for me and really kind of helped me develop and really, like, pushed for me to get that spot. And ever since then, I was kind of, like – kind of just took it and didn't look back. So, I, I mean, let's talk about high school. Uh you were a guy that, that kind of made the mark back then um, for for a dude that just picked up the ball when you were a freshman. Uh, Junior Olympics the squad you were on had uh, some some pretty uh, other known names. Like you were a known name in college rugby from the last couple of years, but you know Junior and Billy Halu, uh, Sue Waiter Poach, uh, JoJo Takoi Suva, like you know. What was that experience like being in a squad of, I said, such high performers and then going down to Argentina and competing? Um, well, for Junior Olympics, it was, it was interesting because we actually we didn't do that well. But it was like it was a good learning experience for all of us to see like the level we needed to get to for the future. So uh, it was a call for all of us. I remember JoJo's here with me now. Like we talk about it every day, but. We kind of we kind of got spanked a little bit, but we we definitely learned from it. So, you know, overall, uh, I, I guess what, one of the interesting things that I found out about uh, you, man, is so you begged your high school football coach not to send your tape out. What what's that story about? Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to have to make like a tough, you know, I didn't have to make a money related, like tough decision. I just wanted to do something I loved and kind of not look back, you know, cause I don't want to get like maybe like a scholarship for football or something. And then be like, kind of be like, uh, like feel obligated to play a sport that I didn't love as much as rugby. So I just kind of told them, don't tell me I'm going to play rugby and kind of not look back. Then, um, you know, when it came to where you chose to go, uh, Penn State, like, how did, you know, that process work? I know, how does rugby recruiting work, actually? Because I know you, there were a bunch of schools you were looking into, right? Davenport being up in Michigan, um, sure, Indiana. 
being one of the closer yeah. ones. I mean, at first I kind of just looked close to me. I didn't really want to be that far from home, but I actually had a friend who played for the Illinois, like the Illinois Tornadoes. It's uh, Illinois select side. I had a friend, Sean Mann, who also went to Penn State, and he was a good friend of mine. So I went to visit, and I kind of just fell in love with the school. So Penn State, uh, you, you know, you were an All-American there, uh, senior captain, uh, basically a de, a de facto leader from, from most of your time there. You know, what kind of environment is Penn State rugby? Um, well, as you know, we've, we've had a lot of coaches, so it's, it's become very player driven, very player driven environment. We just, we got really good at holding each other accountable into a higher standard. Didn't you have three coaches while you were there? I had six. Whoa. (laughs) Okay. So how does, how does that work? Like, how did that happen? Um, well, the first one was, uh, the shed fire thing happened, so that was one gone. Then we had we had Alf Daniels, who coaches Utah now. He came down, and he was he was great. Alf was a great coach, but um he couldn't stay for long. Then we had a couple more assistants. We had Blake Burdett, also a great coach. Then we had Willix, who left to Dartmouth, and now we're with Justin Hunley, who is also a great coach. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, interesting that. Penn State is an environment not only that attracts uh, high-level players, but is able to attract high-level coaches who are sort of able to deal with, um, you know, there's a coaching carousel that continues to happen because other guys move on to to bigger things, You seemingly. Or maybe better fit for them, I don't know. But uh, players are still coming. Um, coaches are still coming. It looks like you're going to get uh, some stability at the alma mater with Justin Hunley because he's a former Penn State player. Yeah, I, I sincerely hope so. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's obviously disadvantages to changing coaches so much, but there, there are advantages as well. Like, you learn something different from, from every coach. So – Let's talk a little bit about your experience in the high performance system, because for the most part, uh, uh, you you've hit every rung as a high school American, a junior. I think you're a junior all American. Am I wrong? Um, you know? was not. But you've been an all. But you've been an all uh, a collegiate all American, and so. What is the work? What is the pathway to make those selections, and then? What is the kind of work that it takes to be selected? I mean, the pathway the pathway in high school is kind of you play for your state select side and you kind of have to perform well at those regional all-star tournaments. In college, it's a bit tougher. You, you kind of have to be in one of those top, top four, top eight teams and just consistently perform well. But so what has been, I guess, the work you've had to put in once you've figured out that this is where you want to be? I mean, it might sound super simple, but you just got to continually like work on your basics, work on your technique. It depends on your position. Like for me, I'm a back rower. So I mean, I consistently work on my tackle tracking, my ball carrying skills, and I try to stay, like, decently strong all the time. You just got to be fit. I mean, it, it sounds it sounds simple, but it's hard to stay consistent at those things. So let's sort of backtrack a little bit. So I read somewhere that you're fa- that two of your three favorite players are fly halves. Um. How does a how does a back row consider Dan Carter and Quade Cooper in their one of the in two of their three oh. favorite players? How, how long ago was that? When did you I, that? I think this was when you were in high school. Uh, you were choosing uh, where to go, and the third one was a flanker. That was Richie McCaw, but uh, 
Wow. I don't know what I was thinking back then. I actually probably would still, I would probably still choose Dan Carter and Johnny Wilkinson. Maybe Brian O'Driscoll to third. My, my favorite player. You like all these backs. Game. What's up with that? So, um, at Penn State, we uh, got really into this rugby game. Rugby 06 was our oh, wow. game to play. We'd always play as either England, New Zealand, or Ireland, and those were just like the best players in the game. We kind of just got obsessed with it. But I mean, they're also they're also world class players. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, was it uh, Dan Carter? Man, he's still he's still getting it done. Uh, the top league championship with the Cobelco Steelers. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should maybe I should change that. I was, well, I was wondering what, uh, what the fly up was. <laughs> well, you know. Um, so uh, n- now you're a professional rugby player with uh, New Orleans Gold. Like, how is uh, – you- last year there were some underclassmen that left uh, college rugby to play, uh, you know, in the MLR. What – were there any – I guess, were there any conversations last year or is it, or was your head down like a good kid, you know, graduate and then we'll uh, see where the cards shake out. Um, yeah, there were no, no conversations last year. I was completely focused on trying to win a national championship with Penn state. Unfortunately, uh, didn't work out, but we, uh, we got far, we got one scalp. We got BYU, but yeah, no talk last year. I was pretty focused on, uh, the college scene. So, collegiate All American camp. Um, there weren't really a lot of, uh, you know, seniors there, uh, or out, I guess graduating players. And you, you guys have I think six guys from that camp that graduated at in NOLA, something like that. Six six guys from NOLA at, at the camp that graduated. Well, so like. I guess uh, the collegiate all American camp that happened in Glendale, there were like eight guys that had graduated and you guys had pretty much signed all of them. Oh, I think, I mean, I think there are maybe three or three or four. Yeah. I mean, I live, I live with two of them. I live with uh, Kevin Sullivan and Matt Harmon. So when, when it came to that environment, what did, what, what was everyone trying to achieve? Um, I, I know you guys did some combine questionnaires and pretty much everyone said they were open to a draft. If, if there was going to be a draft of any kind, I guess, but uh, was it, did you guys go in thinking, you know, I'm here to put my hand up for a job to play in the MLR or is this, you know, I'm trying to make the Eagle squad for next or was it all, you know, a combination of things? Um, I mean, I would say it's, it's a combination. Like you have to keep those overarching goals, like obviously to become an Eagle and you want to play, there's the pro league, you want to play at the professional level, but you kind of have to break those goals down and then like focusing on what's in front of you. So, I mean, we were pretty focused that week on first off, just pre- performing well ourselves and then getting ready. Once we made the team getting ready for a game against Glendale. So, I mean, Willix and the coaches there kept us pretty, uh, they kept us pretty focused and they also, took time to help us develop our skills a little bit while we were there as well. So I guess let's, let's talk about that piece. Uh, All Americans versus Glendale. That was, uh, you know, for, for a lot of people, that was an eye opener about, you know, what the college scene can do uh, and how it develops players. What, what were you guys thinking going into that game? I I kind of didn't know what to think. I mean, it was it was a little bit intimidating going against the Glendale Raptors. They only lost one one or two games last season. I was also I got moved to lock for uh, for the team, so I was trying to try to figure that out as well. And uh, I'm so happy when our, our scrums kind of dominated that game. Yeah, uh, a six one lock. Oof, that's a. I, I was once in the engine room. Never again. I mean, never. I, I played lock. I mean, in the last last maybe four or five games for Penn State too. I've I've learned to, I've learned to like it. As long, long as you're on the field, I understand. 
but uh, <laughs> being a lock takes uh, it, it, it takes a lot out of you, you know, pushing the pushing that's, them big front rowers around. That's actually the first thing I learned from Penn State when I was uh, when I was flanker. I always try to kind of encourage my locks, like, all right, we got this scrum. Sometimes they look at me and just be like, sh- like, shut up. <laughs> and I really understood why they get so angry till I, till I was there doing it. So I mean, end result, per, pretty much a, a dominant performance for the All Americans. What, what was the feeling like with that player group afterwards? Um, it was. I mean, we we're all kind of just ecstatic. Like we we're gonna get first team All American, first or second team. We just beat one of the best pro teams in the league. I mean, we we're, we're we're all just really uh, sorry, cat. <laughs> um, we we're really proud of ourselves. Why a cat and not a dog? So I mean, here she is. What's up? Uh, her name's a- her name's April, so like April, April, May. But um, got yeah, it. I'm too. I'm still like, kind of figuring out how to take care of myself. And a dog's like you gotta walk it every day. You gotta. It's a lot more to deal with than a cat. Cat just kind of throw food in her bowl, and she's she's happy. Uh, yeah, I, you know I uh, I had a mentor that said you know. When you're a young lieutenant and you need something like warm that's going to snuggle up next to you, don't get a dog because you're never going to have time. Get a cat. And, well, you'll always sit in their spot so they'll come and sit on you. That's, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> um, so for those that don't know, uh, cousin's uncle, Mark May, right? So, Yeah, Mark May is – like one of my one of my cousins, at, at least at least that's what my dad says. So, oh, I was gonna say like, uh, how do you uh, how do you get that guy in front of a rugby game and then talk know. about influencers influencing? Right, uh, he's got a, probably a couple million followers. Just have him start uh, tweeting about rugby. I gotta I gotta look into that. It's a good idea. So. Has that ever been a thing in the fam? Just be like, hey, where, where's uh, where's cousin Mark? Um, I mean, not not really. We're not. It's not like super close family, but like we are we are related. Gotcha. It's just funny because when you, when you look when you search like your name, man, it it comes up. You know, like either cousin or nephew of Mark May, and it's just like okay, maybe. So I I figured I'd ask. And see where that was would go. But um, so let's talk about New Orleans, man. Uh, when did you get the the offer to come down? Um, about two months ago, I was working up in New Hampshire at a at a boarding school, actually, Kimball Union Academy. I was teaching a class uh, to freshmen called Life Choices. Very uh, very interesting job. But yeah, it was about two months ago. And I, Kind of thought on it for a while and realized like this is something I needed to do. Man, um, so how long have you been down in New Orleans? About a month, I think. Yeah, about a month. About a month. Crazy. So what? What does your guys' schedule look like right now? Monday we practice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays off. Thursday, Friday. We'll probably we'll start the day off probably with a lift in the morning. Then we'll have team meetings, and then we'll we'll have a practice, and then we have lunch, and that's kind of our day is kind of like eight eight to two. And I also have another job at a uh, Waldo Burton. It's like a it's a boys' home, so I work there as kind of like a relief counselor. Um. So so you so let's talk about that a little bit. I guess uh, you know you. Were, you were teaching a, a course called Life Choices to to young kids at a at a boarding school, and now you're a relief counselor. Do you how do you look at mentorship? Because that's that's what you're basically doing. I mean, it's it's super important. That's kind of why that's one of the things that attracted me to Nola is that like I spent a lot of time a lot of my time at Penn State mentoring other players, but because we had so many coaching changes, like. I I maybe needed more mentorship in here with all these caps floating around. Like I'm I'm definitely gonna develop and be mentored. 
I've definitely already learned a lot in my three or four weeks here. So going back to uh, when you guys played USA South a couple of weeks ago, uh, 45 to 10 victory in the pouring rain, uh, you know, first, uh, first little hit out with, uh, with the gold Jersey. What did you guys go into that, uh, thinking? Um, we just, we kind of just wanted to work on the things we worked out, worked on throughout the week. Cause we, we all are kind of a new together. We were kind of struggling with, uh, cohesion. So we just wanted to come out that day and, and just execute on the stuff we worked on. But obviously it was, uh, kind of a difficult day to do that. Uh, but I will you know. say from, from, that week, from that first game that we can practice to the game last Saturday, we've already like made significant strides. Yeah, that, that was uh, kind of, kind of impressive. Uh, 113 to zero over stars rugby 15s. Uh, uh, as I, as I've mentioned, uh, the other night on the Earful of Dirt show, it was. It, it's hard to know what to take uh, when you when you have those kinds of victories. Uh, especially, I mean, you probably had one or two of those when you played football in high school, where either you either lost or you won by a lot, and it's really it's at times those can be throwaway games. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think maybe maybe an open play, it might have been a bit of a throwaway, but the strides we made in our set piece were uh, felt pretty good. They felt significant, for sure. So you guys gonna just walk down the mall every uh, every every line out? One of our goals this year is to be one of the tougher mauling teams in the league. So we're gonna we're gonna get into that this year. Well, you got some big, big locks, and then you've got a, you know, an eagle lineout threat on the roster in, uh, in Cam Dolan. I, I would think you guys, uh, you guys get pretty good at it. You pretty, Nola was pretty good at it last year too. Cool. So, and then uh, you know, your guys' next opponent is Midwest, correct? In, uh, in January. Yes, that is correct. Um, so, are, are you guys? breaking for the holidays or just uh, they're going to say, Hey, uh, you get Christmas off and then, um, you know, back to the gym. I mean, yeah, pretty much we're getting, we're getting a couple days off for Christmas and then, and then we're probably going to get right back, right back to it. I think next we get off Friday and we have to be back by Wednesday. So, I mean, I mean, you don't want to take too many days off. We've been, uh, we've been working pretty hard. We don't want it to, we don't want to slow the momentum down. So how would you compare, like you talked about the, your practice schedule so far, how would you compare that to what you had in college? Um, I don't have to worry about going to class. But, um, I mean, it's not – I mean, you just have more time to, to work on your craft. Like, even in college, we'd lift three to four times a week, and then we'd meet and have practice. It's just those – extra things like schoolwork and stuff like that you don't have to worry about. And you could spend that mental energy just getting better at rugby. What has been the, I get for you, the identified thing that you needed to improve upon your game when you got into camp and then compared to where you are now a month away? Because it's kind of interesting. You're a month in, but you're a month away from the season starting. Hmm. It's a tough question. There's always stuff to work on. Um, I would say, actually, uh, which is the great thing about having Cam Dolan here, is my line-out mechanics. So these are just kind of things that I didn't, I didn't even know I needed to work on. When I talked to Cam and some of the other dudes, like Hubert, like they they taught me some of the details that I that I was missing that I've uh, worked pretty hard to fix. So yeah, just just details. Let's see what else is good. All right, all right, we, we gotta go. We gotta go to the easy softballs, the fun <laughs> stuff. 
So I hope you do not wear moldits. No, no, no. You, you can't. You can't wear them here. The, the grass is always so wet and muddy. You know what's kind of funny to always to like hear uh, which forwards wear moldits because a hey, moldits don't last that long. Um, I think I asked. Uh, oh, I asked some Canadians, like the sevens players. They're like moldeds are worthless because we would go through you go through five pairs in a season. I don't think I've owned moldeds in a in a while. Trust me, you will run a, one of your opponents or someone on your team is a closet moldeds person. I think if you're a moldeds person, it's just like you don't have cash for new cleats right now. Probably <laughs> that's 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 sometimes fair. All right, all right. Um, I would have to lend my um, my studs to uh, Penn State lock Ryan McNulty a couple a couple games, and then I, then I would actually have to wear moldeds. That's uh, that's that's a, that's criminal. Uh, what what's the big three? You know, bench, squat, deadlift. Oh, and what's what's your clean and jerk? Because I know you guys get. You guys get put through the ringer down there at West Side. I don't have a clean and jerk, but squat is um squats four sixty five. Bench is about three thirty five. Deadlift, I I haven't maxed on deadlift in a long time, but I would I would assume maybe probably five hundred plus. Nice, pretty nice. Um, do you do you throw around Atlas stones with John Sullivan? Oh man, those things killed me. I, <laughs> you need the perfect form to get those things up. So I think I got, I think I got a three three hundred up the uh, when we tried them the first time. But once I get my form up, I can do. I'll probably be able to do a bit more. Three hundred. That yeah. Wow, that's that's kind of impressive actually. I, I've never messed around with Atlas stones. Four 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 hundred is the big one. That's uh that's the one everyone's aiming for. I think I think probably will get it first though. Got it. Um, so, since you're in New Orleans, jambalaya or gumbo? Gumbo. 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 Yeah. A lot of my family's from the South, so we kind of grew up uh, eating a lot of gumbo and food from here. Um, let's see. Do you know what voodoo chips are? No, I do so, not. Next time you're at a gas station, get voodoo chips. What, what are what are they? They're just well, they're they're chips, but they're they're it's it's a Louisiana brand of chips that uh, they have in in like different parts of the South that uh, apparently you can now find in Arizona, but uh, you know, kind of have to just go. What I remember going grabbing a big bag going through the New Orleans airport, but they're they're legit. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll grab some today probably. And uh, let's see, what else is good? So, what is this? What is the one secret about you that you will now put out to the public? Uh, hmm. Is <laughs> put me on the spot here. Um. All right. During uh. During grade school, when we picked instruments, I uh, I picked the flute. I didn't know it was like a mostly women's instrument, so I played the flute for about five or six years. Did you do marching band? Not marching band, but I did do band, and I, it was just kind of me and like twelve girls every year. And I started to realize, like, hey, I don't think a lot of dudes play this instrument. Hey, but band is a band is a way to meet girls, though. That's true, but then I stopped and I picked up the guitar instead. Also, another way to meet girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Malcolm, uh, you know, uh, for anyone who's watched you uh, play uh, this weekend uh, on the Gift Time Rugby Network against uh, the Stars. Uh, they'll know that uh, you're a hard hitter, uh, you're a skillful player, and uh, we look forward to watching you 
uh, suit up week in and week out for uh, NOLA Gold Rugby. Thank you. Um, I'm Aaron Castro. Uh, we're off the next couple of weeks, but hopefully we'll get another interview out for you uh, on Earful of Dirt.